welcome back. And now it's on to the subject that everybody loves to talk about, the carburetor. Incidentally, my carburetor diagnosis and disassembly video and my idle speed mixture adjustment video is some of my highest viewed and highest rated videos. And I can only attribute that to people just are baffled by this thing and here's another one off of this bike that we're working on you know it's got some unique qualities to it as far as how it's designed but overall it functions exactly the same as any other carburetor out there all right we got the bowl off our carburetor we're going to clean it up disassemble it and clean it up and everything um, I'm not going to go into too much detail on actually how to do this because I have other videos that explain this and explain the theory of the carburetor and its operation. So you can go over and find those on my show. Uh, but I will uh, point out some somewhat unique things about this carburetor and its, its design. It, like I said, it functions exactly the same as every other carburetor out there. It's just the design is a little bit different compared to what you're mostly used to. Okay, just to show you some unique uh, design features on this carburetor that are a little more unique is you'll notice that the uh, the uh, two floats ride on little pins that are in uh, in the carburetor bowl. Now, typically, and if you watch my other videos, you'll see that the uh, floats actually ride and are attached on the arm. In this case, the the carburetor float arm is operated by two little pins that are on the uh, floats here you can see and it rides right on them. Another unique uh, portion of the uh, thing that uh, makes this carburetor unique is actually how the main jet circuit operates. Because this is a rotary valve engine and this carburetor sits behind a cover and it's enclosed in the engine cases basically. There's a plug on the outside cover that you take that off and then to to access the main jet is by by this uh, unique style of uh, banjo boat, bolt and there it is. There's your main jet on the end of this banjo bolt that has holes in the end here. How it works is you look down in here, there's one big hole right down there, and the fuel enters there, then goes into this chamber, then into this uh, depressed portion in the casting, which then is sealed by this O-ring, and then this is where the jet needle fits down into, and the jet controls how much fuel is allowed to flow into this portion and thusly up into the uh, portion of where the uh, jet needle rides. And another interesting kind of feature of this carburetor because it's in a sealed compartment within the engine and not externally like outside, your all the vent hoses have to be interconnected and then they run out and through a grommet in the case, which you'll see later when we get back to the engine and disassemb and assembling the engine back into the frame and hooking up the uh, fuel lines and also there's a vacuum line that operates the uh, fuel shutoff and more on that later. This carburetor also features an air screw. This is the uh, intake bell or the portion that if if the air filter clamped on here this would be the air filter side and you can see there's a screw right here this is an air screw um, so not, not a fuel screw fuel screws are typically found under here or on this side of the carburetor this this side goes directly towards the engine all the further I'm going to go in explaining how this carburetor operates. I'm going to get to disassembling it, cleaning it up, and verifying the specifications per the service manual. And then we'll be ready to start installing the engine into the frame and try to start this thing. <laughs> 